Sponsored by something that maybe couldn't normally be done or nobody has taken an interest at. I like giving back to the ones that nobody wants. Welcome to Seeing the Need, Finding the Solution. I'm your host, Phil McElveen, and welcome to the campaign of Where Do We Go From Here? Understanding health disparities as it relates to mental illness, understanding whole health and treating the person, and seeing the need, finding the solution with integrated health solutions. Uh, today, we have a very special guest on our show from La Frontera Impact Suicide Prevention, uh, Mr. Conrad Brown, clinical coordinator, correct? Thank you, Phil. That's exactly right. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, Conrad, let's uh, give me a little bit about yourself and, and impact and what your role is there. After a long career outside of the mental health field, I decided to close the circle on some early training and I uh, returned to school about 10 years ago, got my certification and um, interned at Impact, became a con contractor there. I'd been with Impact for about six years. And for the last four and a half years, I have been in the Trauma Healing Services Department, which is kind of a separate department within Impact. And I'm currently both a clinician, a group leader, and a coordinator supervisor there. And trauma healing, uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, some sort, one of the things you wanted to put down here and talk about was sources of clinical trauma in family, civilian, and military, which really is a big focus of what we're doing this year, which is focusing on veterans and PTSD. So talk a little bit about that, that clinical trauma aspect. Well, first of all, the term trauma, as we know it, uh, refers to emotional trauma that might have been generated early in life in in terms of contact with parents, could have been generated on the battlefield or in any other stressful situation. If somebody is assaulted on the street and they're overpowered, uh, there's a very good likelihood that uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, will eventuate from that. And it has impacts throughout the entire life, physically, emotionally, socially, in terms of habits, drug habits, relationships. And eventually, when somebody decides they want to change their life, they might give us a call, and we take it from there. So, and one of the things I picked up on, you said that they might develop or evolve into post-traumatic stress dis disorder. So that emotional damage can be stagnant and, and lay dormant for a while. Well, absolutely. Uh, if somebody is 
abused sexually, for example, or emotionally. And by the way, sexual abuse, early sexual abuse, until fairly recently has been a taboo subject. As recently as 1980, uh, within the psychiatric profession, it was considered to be a one in a million rarity. We know better. A hundred years ago, Freud originally uh, believed that it was, it was about as common as we now know it to be, and then he recanted and, and went a different direction. And until about the last 30 years, it's been a taboo subject. But um, about one girl in three has been sexually abused on some level. That does not necessarily mean full-on sexual abuse, but exposure to sexual abuse. One boy in six undergoes the same sort of thing. And so because children want their lives to be as good as possible, and because they want to believe the best about the, uh, their parents or whoever it might be that abused them, uh, it's repressed. It's repressed for a whole host of reasons, um, and survival is sort of the, the umbrella reason for that, because if they spill the family secret, spill the dark secret, uh, they're going to be re repercussions. And so people can repress uh, for virtually an entire lifetime. One of our services at Impact is um, a group for men who have been sexually abused, and it's unique or virtually unique in this area. Sure. Uh, just last night we met and we have two individuals in that group who are in their 60s wow. and and both of them have repressed early childhood sexual abuse in one case uh, prior to five years of age for decades four decades five decades and uh, there are strong reasons for continued uh, repression as I said a moment ago as we uh, become adults and and something th threatens to bubble up uh, sometimes it can be like trying to keep a beach ball underwater, but eventually it's going, going to come up and come out, and, uh, and people are able to face it. Sure. You know, I did some research not too long ago, and um, it was talking about how young uh, some of these women are, and, and it was correlating with sex trafficking. One of our legal staff at the, on, on seeing the need uh, handles uh, the legal counsel at ASU with the sex trafficking department. Uh -huh. And, uh, but they were talking about as young as, you know, 14, 13 in that area, but um, at least two to 300 uh, uh, clients a year at the age of 15 and 16. And I, I think of my daughter and, and think of what some of those people, uh, and you're talking about maybe an instance or something happening with somebody on, this, on that part. Um, can you, I can't even fathom the trauma uh, that it happens to somebody when that happens. And How old is your daughter, Phil? Um, I have one that's uh, 15 and one that's 8. Well, when somebody is overwhelmed uh, with a situation that uh, they're powerless in, that they cannot control, it really is conducive to the development of, of PTSD or significant trauma afterwards. Just last night on TV, on a different channel, I saw the story of Sherry Carney who uh, back in the 1980s was a very successful lawyer mm -hmm. and one day as she was trying a case she physically literally at attacked a witness who was the perpetrator of sexual abuse on his daughter and uh, the compassionate wise judge gave her the opportunity for counseling and as a result of counseling she came to terms with her own sexual abuse that began when she was six months old wow. we're not talking about the so-called recovery memories which generate, generated a scandal back in the 80s and 90s and you might recall that. We're talking about real memories. Eventually she confronted her parents but in her case the bottom line is, is the most important piece of this which is that re recovery and change, authentic change and healing are possible. She went through her own therapy and she's had a nationwide impact because by 1990 she had generated legal changes in the state of California that uh, abolished the, the age 19 prohibition on bringing a lawsuit against perpetrating elders, parents. Mm -hmm. And now in, now, in 2012, in 40 states, um, people who discover that they have been sexually abused as youngsters can sue as a last resort, certainly not as a first resort, because there are big downsides, possibly, to going in into the courtroom. Sure. And but, uh, but this is one of the uh, indications that healing does change, does, does happen and change 
constructive change can occur. Uh, as I get into ask you a question about approaches to PTSD before we go to commercial break and giving somebody reasons for hope, I can tell you from experience, uh, I'm very transparent on the show and transparent with what I do and what we do. Uh, having somebody that uh, tried to take uh, sexual ad advantage of me when I was a child um, and having that first experience be so twisted and not have it correct took me many, many years. Um, and that coupled with uh, the addiction and different stuff that followed with that before I had the opportunity to get sober. Um, it is not a fun life mentally uh, for that to happen. And, and there is hope. Speaking of that, what are some approaches to give somebody hope who suffers from PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder? We've got about, uh, about a minute and a half left. Sure. We have a lot of programs at Impact. To begin with, we have eight different groups. In addition to the men's group I spoke of, we have multiple women's groups, and these are support groups, and they're also psychoeducation groups called DBT, or Dialectical Behavior Therapy groups. Mindfulness is a key component, the ability to live in the moment of, of these groups, as well as our therapy. We have some wonderful case manager advocates who, who advocate for individuals, sometimes ac accompany them to legal proceedings mm -hmm. and help them negotiate their way through um, a really intimidating system. And then we have a number of full-time staff therapists who are trained in trauma-specific therapies, notably eye movement desensitization reprocessing, EMDR as it's commonly mm -hmm. known, which is uh, not a talk therapy because the trauma neurologically doesn't go to the human brain, it doesn't go to the, uh, to the cortex, which responds to talk therapy. It hangs up elsewhere, and there need to be other approaches. And, sure. and these are well-validated, fairly new therapies. As you look on the screen, uh, Mr. Conrad Brown uh, will be back with impact throughout this campaign as well. There's some information up on your screen uh, with numbers that you can call for trauma services, you can call for groups, you can call for suicide prevention. Go ahead and call uh, La Frontera Impact Suicide Prevention Center at one of the numbers on your screen and uh, give yourself a, a, a reason for hope and uh, give them a call. They are an excellent, excellent organization. Conrad, thank you so much and uh, we'll welcome. be back with you soon. Good being here, Phil. Thank, thank you. you. Let me introduce myself to you This is who I am No more, no less Spend all your time with second chance for a break that would make it okay we are 100% committed to preventing suicide to feel not good enough we represent 100% we represent 100% we represent 100% we represent 100% There's no stigma or discrimination against the heart, the liver, the kidney, even the gallbladder. It doesn't even have a job. Yesterday, depression was kept in the dark. And bipolar disorder was your best friend's mother's problem. But the tide is turning. We're stopping the stigma. We're coming out. Our goal is to make the discussion of mental dis-ease cool and trendy. No kidding? Me too. No kidding. Me too. No kidding. Me too. It's time we gave the all-American brain some peace of mind. Living with mental illness is a challenge, but it makes me stronger. Some would say I'm crazy. I would say I'm enlightened. Some would say I have a disability. I would say I have special abilities. Some would say I'm far from ordinary, but I'd say I'm extraordinary. One in four adults are affected by a mental illness. To learn more, visit oneinfour.info. How do you go from mental health to health disparities, understanding whole health, uh, integrated health solutions, and cause marketing? And uh, with that, I'm going to welcome Mr. Bill Brace 
owner, inventor, and uh, friend, carry me one, two, three. Welcome. Yes, Bill. thank you for having me. Uh, all the way from California. This is actually a real privilege for me uh, to be able to uh, start that uh, demographic, uh, not just in Arizona, but in California, and then try to pull in other states. As you know, Arizona, a lot of people come from out of state. Um, I talked in uh, previous segments about the multi I mean, trillion dollars worth spent in advertising. So I really want to try to get some of that back to Phoenix and help some people with the help of a lot, a lot of organizations and, and companies uh, mixing with that in. Uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, <laughs> starting at the, uh, your military, we do a lot of stuff, obviously, with this right. campaign and PTSD and veterans. So tell, give me a little background on you. Uh, militarily wise, I did... Uh, 20 plus years in the military. I did about half of it in the active duty and about half of it in the reserves. And um, what happened was is I got back in the reserves after being out for a few years and uh, became a combat CB. And the CBs are a uh, construction battalion of the Navy and we work with the Navy as well as with the Marine Corps. And be a combat CB, you take the training at Camp Pendleton as well as 29 palms on various types of weapons, ammunition, that kind of thing, and you fire rocket launchers and so on and so forth. And uh, I love being a CB, and uh, there's nothing like being a part of an organization that works together and, and has some responsibility for... Uh, doing something about our country. And that's awesome. After your military career, I think when we spoke yesterday, you talked <laughs> about uh, a hotel that you yeah. that you owned in a, in a in a ski area that didn't snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the uh, the next thing after that came hay. Yeah. Um, that you got involved with, yeah, and yeah. Uh, you worked with thoroughbreds and hay in California for right. how many years? Twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. And uh, now you invented uh, a while back a device. Yes. Uh, but before we go that, what I did is I, I, I did something kind of special for you. Um, this man also was a stuntman in California. He did a movie with Peter O'Toole right. called The Stuntman. So I found a clip of him in this movie uh -oh. 23 years ago. <laughs> Actually, 33 years ago. Go ahead and take a look at this. <laughs> oh. Oh, there he goes. Let's see. You know oh. what? If we can, let's see that. Uh, let's cue that up and, and give it one more time. That is the Stuntman movie uh, with Peter O'Toole, right. uh, Mr. Bill Brace, and that is actually Bill uh, falling from the pole. There he goes, and bam! There you are. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You went from being. You've had a. a, a that was when I was young and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep kicking. Keep kicking. Yes. Yes. Um, this product here, um, one thing I love is even in the behavioral health field, we were rolling around the idea and very seriously uh, thinking about uh, uh, mixing up with Walgreens. We had some talks and still do and trying to finalize some stuff about, you know, when breast cancer put the pink ribbon on the Campbell's can, mm -hmm. uh, not only did they receive about a half a million dollars in free advertising, but uh, over a quarter million dollars was raised in the first 30 days in reference to the profits mm -hmm. uh, for that charity as well. Um, so we were thinking about some different ideas and product placement for mental illness um, and trying to get that out. Um, so it's a blessing to be able to work with you where uh, the knowledge just comes in with the uh, the uh, credit card info in reference to the uh, the mill house and all that kind of stuff that goes along with product placement. And these are really, really cool. What you do is you clip these on your window um, in the back side of the window uh, or a window and you go like that and you can carry stuff um, and it's a simple, really, and uh, you want to demonstrate or you want me to? You, you can. <laughs> you can carry skis, you can carry lumber, um, you can carry whatever fits in there. Right. Uh, a child, if it's acting up, but no, I'm just kidding. Right. Um, Let me explain. Go ahead. You roll the window down, you hook this up on the window like so, roll the window up into the sash. Once you have it in the sash, then you can take skis, two by fours, VP, PVC pipe, as you see on the video, and you just you can take, leave them in your glove compartment. You can take them out. You put them on the window. You roll the window up, and then you put the product, which is fishing rods, skis, lumber, lumber PVC pipe, skateboards, whatever, 
that will work and uh, you take the bungee cord, pull it around, snap it into place and there you are, you're all done. And when you get done with the product, you can take it off your window and throw it back in the glove compartment and that's it. So that kind of takes, a, it, it's so simple, it's difficult for people to find problems with it. Really. <laughs> but they keep trying, which is okay. You, you know, know what, I, what, how encouraging it is um, for, I mean, your military career, uh, entrepreneurial, um, you know, in that field for 20 years with the thoroughbreds. And uh, the video, I mean, look at that. I, I don't know how many times I've been on vacation uh, up where the snow is or even up where fishing is. And um, I had to go buy the stuff at the site, which is a lot more expensive, because I didn't have no way to put it in the vehicle I had or when I got there mm -hmm. um, type of thing, you right. know, especially when it came to longer stuff like uh, uh, like skis and stuff like that. Two by fours. So, two by fours. Um, and, and, and one of the, the ideas we talked about before was, a reference to the commercial was, uh, which we uh, were rolling around was, uh, can you imagine uh, a guy with a motorcycle and then, and the, the guy, the, the old boyfriend walking up to the new girl, or the old girlfriends, and the girlfriend saying, hey, you just can't take me to where he can, and they ride off on the motorcycle, and can you imagine the guy rolling back up with these on his window and a couple <laughs> fishing poles, and she looks at the bike and jumps in the car, and then he's standing there with a fishing pole and a motorcycle going, how do I make this fit? So, um, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. But uh, in, in reality, uh, what we decided to do was help Bill um, as well, try to get this product out and uh, in a very different way, in a big way. Bill has a heart for people with mental illness, addictions. Uh, that's where I want to go real quick. Uh, okay. Um, uh, one reason why you got involved with this campaign mm -hmm. would be what? I, I just like helping people. You know, I've been around a long time. I've had uh, several times I've been able to uh, delegate my time for uh, various things and, and working with people with uh, uh, allergies as well as uh, alcoholism, drug addiction, um, mental stuff and uh, you know most of the things that uh, we talk about when I deal with people like that is some of the experiences I had in life as a child as well as an adult and and today because of the of the interaction that I have with other people who have some of the same addictions that I had uh, I'm I'm just so much further ahead than I've ever been mentally and physically you know right while you were speaking it kind of bring tears to my eyes it's amazing to me of uh, what the good man upstairs brings through these campaigns um, it could have been anybody Mm -hmm. But he brings the people who seriously have a heart and honestly have a heart uh, for the people who are still suffering and uh, in ways that I would never even have thought imaginable. Uh, you might see this product, which is a great product, and you might see it as, oh, um, there's, a, there's a product and, and that's it. But the reality behind this is you have a very blessed man involved in a very blessed project um, with a very serious goal, which is to help the person who is still suffering from their from mental illness. It's to educate the community mm -hmm. in understanding what health disparities is about. It's in understanding uh, and giving ways of hope in treating the whole person in our community. Arizona statistics are much higher in many, many categories for those health disparities. And the reality of it is, uh, if somebody gets ready to stand up or, or, or gets ready to get involved and just say selling a product and say donating percentages of, 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 of revenue to help campaigns, right. now that's huge, Bill, huge. Um, I've had the pleasure of spending some time with you back and forth between here and San Diego. And um, it amazes me uh, of, of how close-knit you are and, and, and the people around you. I had the ability to spend some time with you at lunch a couple weeks ago. Um, and the laughter and the joy um, that goes beyond mm -hmm. this. And one of the things I asked you before we, we bring you on board with this is, what is your reason for doing this? Do you, do you want to make money? And he'll never forget it. And you're like, you looked at me and said, the first thing you said is, um, my main thing is, is I want it to work. That's right. And, and, and if we all, all took that approach and just wanted it to work, we want the medical system to work, we want the recovery system to work, we want the mm -hmm. uh, healthcare system to work, uh, we want uh, things to work. And if you, the motive is pure, then the outcome will definitely be 
what is on your heart. Um, uh, we've got this, a couple minutes and left. This is, in a certain way, this is a service to everybody because I think over the years, uh, especially now that we have smaller cars, that people need to carry things on their cars, like skis and so on and so forth. So this is somewhat uh, a service to our, our people and, and people around us who drive small cars, especially the kids and stuff like that that go skiing and snowboarding and skateboarding and stuff like that. And it's, it's such a simple device. Well, even above that, look at the economy. Say you're building something, uh, uh, female or male, um, and you do own a small car. What do you usually got to do to get that lumber to your home? You know, you either got to call up a friend as a truck, you know, that's kind of like the airport phone call and nobody wants to take it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but something that, um, you know, with that economy where it's a do-it-yourself type of world now that's getting more and more entrepreneurial, um, and the cars are getting smaller for economic reasons, but um, what a great, uh, A, what a great device, what a great invention. B, um, congratulations on stepping out and doing something uh, and not just being uh, stagnant in life. <laughs> so um, there'll be uh, some commercials coming on the show. We'll be actually promoting this in a very big way um, to try to get his dream to come true and at the same time trying to make a difference in our community by collaborating that for-profit with that non-profit. Um, so tune in to watch the show. You know, we'll tell you where you can get it. You can actually go to the website, carryme123.com. Um, you can look at some different pictures, some different photos, family mm -hmm. shots, um, and, and take a look at it. If you want to get something mm -hmm. that's a really good gift for somebody that's going to give back to the community and mm -hmm. also be kind of cool, something that they've never had, and that's really what it is, mm -hmm. is giving somebody something that they never had. Giving somebody who suffers from mental illness, and we talked about it in a, in a previous show, uh, of the ability of somebody caring about them. Giving somebody a message of hope. My name is Phil McElveen, and this is Bill Brace from San Diego. From Thank Carrie you so much for having me. Uh, love it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we will be back with uh, Seeing the Need, Finding the Solution next Sunday. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you. Remember, if you understood this program, thank a teacher. And if you were able to watch it in the comfort of your home, thank a soldier. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.